Ni hao, I'm Charlie Gordon. Ni hao, I'm Stephen Wolf. And we're here to give you our Chinese culture and commerce survival guide. But before we get to that, we want to show you a quick video of what we thought we were going to experience before going to China. Let's go take a look. Alright, so the first things that I think of when I think of China. So some of the things that I think of when I think of China are the Great Wall, uh, Chinese food, uh, or obviously the cuisine. The cuisine is very different from what we consider American cuisine. And it's a very large nation, a very uh, diverse nation. Which, um, respect of your elders, uh, conformity, uh, censorship. We're coming to learn now in this class. And I'm really excited to just go over there and get my feet wet and learn a lot about Chinese culture firsthand. After a two-week course in Gainesville, Florida, we felt like we were very well prepared. Well, I mean as well as we could have been. We had no idea what would be in store in the next month. Here we've created for you a top China survival guide. So let's get started. First in our survival guide, we're going to talk about transportation. Now there are many similarities between China and the United States as far as transportation goes, but there are some key differences that we want to go over. The subway system is expansive and extremely efficient at getting you almost anywhere in the city. It is also the cheapest form of transportation at 2 yuan per ride, about 30 cents. The system is so efficient that for most of the day, the trains are filled to capacity. Here is a subway attendant whose sole duty is to get people on board as quickly and safely as possible. Here is a video that we took on the subway. We are at the Beijing subway system, and as you can see, this is a light day for rush hour. We're at Tiananmen West right now. So we're about in the middle of the city, going through the subway, and it's actually very, we have a lot of space today. As you can see, we're not all standing crowded together. Yeah, I have like a whole head foot. It's crazy. So one thing you need to be prepared for when you come to China is the subway system. It's very crowded and very efficient and very cheap, but very crowded. Next up on our transportation list is the taxi. Now, the taxi might be a little more expensive than using the subway, but it will get you exactly to where you need to go in the city for usually less than 15 US dollars. Now, a word of caution to the foreign traveler. Make sure that the taxi driver uses the meter in the car or else you might be overpaying for that trip. And lastly, we have bikes. Cycling is a huge part of the culture in China. And as you can see, even we put our bikes to full use from moving groceries to people and yes, even suitcases. Now that we've shown you how to get there, we're going to run off a list of the top five places you have to visit while in Beijing. The first place on our list of must-see Beijing sites is the new Summer Palace. It is located on the edge of Beijing, but still accessible by subway. It is a huge complex covering almost three square kilometers, with the lake covering most of it in the center. Next up, we have the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City was a Chinese imperial palace from the Ming Dynasty to the end of the Qing Dynasty. It is located in the middle of Beijing, right across from Tiananmen Square. For over 500 years, it served as the home of the emperors and their household, as well as the ceremonial and political center of Chinese government. Wangfu Jing District is located just east of Tiananmen Square. It is a spot to try exotic animals you wouldn't eat in the States. They have scorpions on a stick, millipede, seahorse, squid, crickets, and many other culinary delights for the steel-stomached tourists. Let's watch a video of Marcus trying millipede. All right, we're here in Wafu Jing in the food market, and uh, this is a newly fried centipede. I'm not exactly sure how to eat it, but we're going to try my best. I figured if we start from the middle where the body is, uh, that should be a safe bet. Uh, no, no, end. Top end. Top end. Top end. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna fall if you bite in the middle. Like, yeah, but that's. Top end. Right. Top end. Top end. Start with a stinger. Here it goes. Wait, is that a stinger? No, just eat it. Okay. Crispy. Crispy. It's crispy. And of course, no trip to China would be complete without a visit to the Great Wall. Originally built to keep invading Mongolians out, it is now considered the cultural icon of China. Let's go take a look at Charlie's experience on the wall. So uh, here we are, me and Marcus hanging Love out. Love videotaping. Love videotaping and uh, showing you the wonders of the Great Wall of China. Take a look at this. We've uh, spent the past two hours hiking. It's been an amazing experience. 
uh, it's been absolutely amazing. seeing each level and going around the corner and just being like, wow. And lastly, the Silk Market. The Silk Market is a notorious international tourist destination for counterfeit designer brand apparel and is a site worth seeing. With six floors of vendors, you can find anything from iPads, purses, suits, and jewelry, and anything in between. Let's take a quick tour. So we're here today at the Silk Market in Beijing, and we've already bought some stuff. Uh, but we just wanted to show uh, you what it's like to walk down one of these aisles. You can already hear it's a little noisy, but when you walk down one of these aisles, they'll call at you in English, trying to get you into the store. And the people here will speak a lot of different languages. You come at them with English, Spanish, French, you name it. They'll speak enough to sell you something. So there's a lot of business going, being, going on right now, and the name of the game is Hagamon. You never give, you never take the first price to give you. So we're going to show you a little bit of the hallways here. In this video, you will see brands like Ralph Lauren, Abercrombie and Fitch, and North Face. Shoppers from around the world will come to purchase knockoff items at a fraction of the cost. Food etiquette is a survival guide essential, and there are many cultural differences between the East and the West. Here, we've included three survival tips on food etiquette in China. So, let's get started with Charlie and dining out. When eating out in China, the food comes to the table whenever it is ready. It is placed on a large lazy Susan that everyone rotates to reach each dish. You have to be fast with your chopsticks or the food might spin away. From here, you may ask, how is it possible to split the bill considering that everyone has shared plates? Well, in the West, it may be common to split the check. However, in China, that is virtually non-existent. Both ordering and paying is done by one person, usually the most senior male at the table. So make sure to bring enough cash. One of the most important skills you'll need to learn before going to China is how to use chopsticks. Chopsticks are not that hard to learn as long as you have enough time to practice with them. And I'm going to show you a couple tips on how to use them correctly. First, you want to take the chopstick, the bottom one, and place it between your thumb and your ring finger and have them push against each other. This will keep the bottom chopstick stable while you use the top one to help pick up food. You want to take the top one and place it between your top of your thumb, pointer finger, and middle finger and use that to pinch the food while keeping the bottom one stable. I would really recommend practicing before you head over so you're not hungry the first week there. But no matter how complete this or any other survival guide may be, it can never fully prepare you for the culture shock you will experience. China is quite literally halfway around the world, so the effects are inevitable. Here we have mentioned three culture shock tips to hopefully soften your blow before you go. One culture shock you'll experience is called the celebrity effect. For most Chinese, you'll be the first fluent English speaker they will have ever seen. Pose, smile, and put up the victory sign. They will love it. Sometime during your trip, you'll get sick of rice and noodles. Fortunately, there are plenty of American restaurants in China. From McDonald's to Starbucks or from Subway to Hard Rock, you will always have a way to satisfy your Western cravings. The best advice during this survival video we can give you is to experience new things and be flexible. I would have never known what corn ice cream or snake tastes like without breaking out of my shell. Stefan, how about you? Being narrow-minded is not an option. Sometimes the trip may have gotten messy, but you might as well grin and enjoy it. This is the experience of a lifetime. And there you have it, the 2012 UF in Beijing Survival Guide. But before we go, we really take this opportunity to personally thank Jason Ward and Robbie Shields. Without them, none of this would have been possible. And remember, Go Gators, Go Global!